Hey everyone, today we are looking at another way to find slope using the slope formula. This is a very important formula for the rest of this year and honestly in all of your high school math classes. Um, so we are going to find the slope between two points. So far we have just been finding the slope of a graph by doing rise over run, but sometimes they don't give you the graph of a line. They will give you two points and we call those points x1 and y1 and x2 and y2. The y's, or sorry, the ones and the twos on those are just telling you this is the first ordered pair and this is the second ordered pair. And here is the formula. We do y2 minus y1 and then we divide it by x2 minus x1. This is basically just rise over run except for when you don't have a graph. This is what you can do to count the rise and divide it by the run. Notice that we have subtraction signs in our formulas, um, so it's gonna be important that you take note of that. So let's practice it on a graph first. Um, let's write out the ordered pairs here. So the ordered pair of this first point right here is zero, two. And then the ordered pair of the second point right here is four, seven. So instead of counting the rise and the run like we normally do, we're gonna use the slope formula. We're gonna do y2 minus y1, and then we will divide it by x2 minus x1. So the, we're gonna start with the second point, which is the top one, and the y value there was seven, and then the first y value was two. So we're gonna do seven minus two, and seven minus two is five. Now, if we were to count the rise, we would get the same thing. One, two, three, four, five. So it's the same thing as counting the rise. All we did was seven minus two instead. Okay, let's do the same thing with the run. The second x value is four, and I'm going to subtract it from the first x value, which was zero. And four minus zero is four. Let's count the run to verify that it is four. One, two, three, four. It is, so again, instead of counting the rise and the run, I just subtracted those ordered pairs instead. On the rise, I did seven minus two, and then on the run, I did four minus zero. So I found my rise and my run by doing part of the slope formula, and then the last step is just to divide them. And five divided by four, that's as simplified as I can get, so that is my slope. Okay, let's practice using the formula to find the slope between two points now without the graph. So the first thing I would do whenever you're learning this formula is labeling your points. So this is my first ordered pair going to label it x1, y1, x2, y2. And now I'm going to plug into the formula. I'm going to do y2 minus y1 on top. So 9 minus 7 divided by x2 minus x1. So 5 minus 12. Okay, you might be tempted to type this whole thing into your calculator. Do not do that. We need to do one line at a time. So nine minus seven is two. And then five minus 12, that's gonna give me a negative number. I'm gonna double check it in the calculator and five minus 12 is negative seven. So that slope is negative two sevenths. Okay, let's practice another one. I'm gonna zoom out so you can see the formula. So here is x1, y1, x2, and y2. Okay, so my y's have some negatives. We have to be extra careful because our formula has subtraction. If there's a negative in my ordered pairs, that does not get taken away by this subtraction sign. They're two different things, so you still have to subtract. So let's see what happens. So I'm gonna do y2 minus y1 on top. So it'll be negative eight minus negative 13. And then on the bottom, I'll have x2 minus x1, so eight minus four. 
Okay, um, you can think of the minus a negative as plus because remember, keep, change, change, or you can just put it into your calculator. Negative eight minus negative 13 is five. And eight minus four is four. So the slope of these two points is five fourths. Okay, number three, let's start the same way. I'm gonna label them x1, y1, x2, y2. So I'm gonna do my y's on top, three minus zero, divided by my x's, 6.5 minus 7.25. And three minus zero is three. And 6.5 minus 7.25 is negative 0 0.75. Okay, that is not a nice looking number. So I'm gonna type it into my calculator and let it tell me this simplified fraction. So I'm gonna do three divided by negative 0.75, and I get negative four for the slope. Okay, one more set of ordered pairs. Again, I'm just gonna label them x1, y1, x2, y2, and we have those negatives, so be careful. I'm gonna do y2 minus y1 on top. So negative 17 minus negative five is on the top for the y's. And then on the bottom, I have x2 minus x1. So five minus negative seven. And again, you can change that to a plus because minus a negative is the same thing as adding a positive. And then that's a little bit easier to type into the calculator negative 17 plus five is negative 12. And then five plus seven is 12 and negative 12 divided by 12 is negative one. So the slope is negative one. Okay, so, so far we have done the slope formula between two sets of ordered pairs. Now we're gonna find the slope of a table. A table just has multiple points in them. So you can decide what two points to use to find your slope. You can use any two points. So I would use the points that are easiest. I'm gonna use the points that don't have decimals since I get to choose any of my points. And then make sure that you label them appropriately. This is our X column right here. So, this will be my x1 and x2. And then if one is x2, that means negative three has to be y2. I can't flip them around. And then negative one is x1 and y1 goes with it, so y1 is zero. Okay, now let's find the slope between those two points and that will tell us the slope of the table. So we're gonna do negative three minus zero for y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So one minus negative one or one plus one. And negative three minus zero is negative three. One plus one is two. And I'm actually gonna change this answer to a decimal since the table gave me numbers and decimals. I want my answer to match that. So negative three divided by two, that decimal is negative 1.5. Okay, number six, we have another table. Um, these numbers, none of them look more difficult to deal with than the others, so I'm just gonna use the first two points. And notice that this table is vertical. So these are my X values and these are my Y values. Okay, so I'm gonna let this be X1, so that means 90 is Y1, and then two will be X2, so that means 140 is Y2. 
Okay, now I'm gonna do y2 minus y1, and I get 140 minus 90, and then x2 minus x1, so two minus one. Now I simplify, 140 minus 90 is 50, and two minus one is one, and 50 divided by one is 50. If we also look closely at this table, we can see that our x values are going up by one, and the y values are going up by 50, so it makes sense that our slope is 50. Okay, last one. It says the table shows the amount of money remaining on a gift card to a local coffee shop based on the number of drinks purchased. Find the rate of change or slope. So again, you can choose any two points from the table to find the slope. Choose the ones that are easiest for you. So I'm gonna choose the whole numbers. I'm going to use this ordered pair and this ordered pair. And now let's label them x1, y1, x2, y2. It does not matter what order you label them in. You could label this second one x1 as long as you match y1 with it. Um, I just like to keep it consistent, so I'm going to start here, x1, y1, and then this will be x2 and y2. Okay, so now I'm going to do y2 minus y1, so 6 minus 13 divided by x2 minus x1, so 8 minus 4. And let's do each line at a time. 6 minus 13 is negative 7, and 8 minus 4 is 4. So the slope is negative 7 fourths. But our table was in decimals, and we're talking about money here, so I'm going to change this to a decimal because that's going to make more sense in the context of this problem. And negative 7 divided by 4 is negative 1.75. So that means that each coffee is negative $1.75. It takes $1.75 away from the gift card.